What's going on, YouTube? This is NecroStevo, and you have entered my Pokemon prediction tutorial. This is going to be a four video series in which I will try to give you all a few of the tips and tricks I've learned over my years of competitive battle that will hopefully help you learn not only how to predict, but when to predict when you're playing Pokemon. Now, before we get started, make sure you leave a like if you find any tips from this video helpful, and feel free to share it with your friends. I also would look forward to seeing your comments in the beneath the video here to see any tips that you guys have about predictions. Now before we get started with any tips in particular, there are some very important things I think you all should know. First of all, hacks is going to happen. There is always going to be things that are out of your control in the battle, and it is important to not only not let those things rattle you when you're battling but try to take those into account when you are battling as well. Sometimes no matter how well you predict, you just roll the dice and you are frozen for six turns straight with a Pokemon that resists the move that they're locked into. You never know. That's part of the game. Sometimes it makes it fun. Sometimes it makes you want to rip your hairy arm out. Either way, just remember that it does happen. Of course, second, remember that safe plays always have a place in battle. It is not to be underestimated the power of being able to predict your opponent's moves and what they may or may not do during battle. But of course, there is no reason to necessarily overpredict and think about it and overthink the situation when a safe play, or what might be termed the obvious play, will net the same result, or a better result, or at the very least stop you from taking an unnecessary risk as a very risky or prediction that maybe only may or may not come into play there. And of course, finally, there is no substitute for experience. That's right, no matter how much you guys play this game, there is only more to be learned. So make sure you get out there, get lots of rivals, get lots of battle experience, and really do everything you can to learn more about the game. Uh, Pokemon has the unique ability of not only being a very deep game, but the community also is very deep. So yes, you are playing a video game, but look at it more than that. It can be a great way to have a logic puzzle. It can be a fun way to meet up with friends. It can be a way to develop new rivalries and competitions and communities that you never thought possible. So. Get all those experiences, battle a lot, and I also recommend watching a lot of battle videos so that you can see the thought process a lot of other trainers go through as well. That way if you do not end up playing competitively and there are prizes on the line or your pride is on the line or someone kidnapped your parents and this is the way that you have to get through the situation, then you have a better chance of succeeding. Now here in part one, we are actually going to t start talking about the team preview screen. Back in Fortune and before that, there was no team preview screen. We actually had to find out information throughout the battle. But now we have the ability to see the opponent's screen for two minutes. Now this is going to be pretty important because during that two minutes you can gain a lot of information about your opponent's team that will help you in making good predictions. The first thing I recommend doing is writing down your opponent's team. At the very least, if you're unable to write it down, try to remember five out of the six Pokemon. That's going to be very, very helpful, not only for understanding the matchups, but understanding how your opponent might play their team. If you're unable to write down the team for any reason, maybe a tournament rule, or you accidentally typed in all six of your Pokemon and hit OK too quickly, take note of the immunities that your opponent's Pokemon have. Pokemon with immunities based off of type are going to be things like a flying type's immunity to ground, or a steel type's immunity to poison. Immunity, of course, is always better than resisting the attack. And any chance that your opponent has to take advantage of those immunities, they're going to do that throughout the battle. And you should do that as well. If you see that you have Pokemon on your team, that are immune to your opponent's stab moves specifically, you want to be aware of those going into the battle. Secondly, 
Besides typing immunities, you also have immunities available through abilities. Now this is really where that experience comes in. There are 718 Pokemon. Almost all of them can have two, sometimes three abilities, depending on whether or not they have access to hidden abilities. That's a lot to take in, but experience in playing the game a lot, or at the very least just watching battles, uh, that's going to give you kind of the, the cannon fodder in your own brain for understanding what immunities you need to be aware of. That's going to be Pokemon with Levitate, that's going to be Pokemon with Water Absorb and Motor Drive and Sap Sipper. All those are really important to know about because that way you will understand when your opponent might be switching a Pokemon in or when they might be trying to get them out of harm's way. Furthermore, it's also important to know the secondary effects of those abilities. Even if you don't necessarily know everything that has the ability Sap Zipper, it's good to know it'll give this Pokemon an attack boost. That way, if you see something that might have Sap Zipper, it will help you determine whether or not it's a physical attacker or are they just taking advantage of the ability, what's going on there. It helps narrow down the roles that that Pokemon might have during the battle. Next, you definitely want to know your win condition. How are you going to win the battle on the team preview screen? You, each of you and your opponent both have six Pokemon available, but chances are they have small chinks in their team to Pokemon on your team, and you are more vulnerable to something that they have on their team. It may just be something like, I brought too many physically defensive Pokemon, and they have a Charizard that might be a Charizard Y, and you have to take that into account. Or it may be, they brought an Infernape, and Infernape can run a bunch of different sets, and firefighting is a really good stab, and I really only have one thing to take those attacks. If you're aware of what your opponent has that threatens your team, not only can you be more prepared for it during battle, because your opponent will definitely make use of it, you can also be thinking of ways ahead of time to handle it. Now it's important to know your own win condition, that way you don't go into the battle foolhardy and sacrifice something that doesn't need to be sacrificed or let things take unnecessary damage. As I mentioned before, an immunity is always better than resisting damage, outside of the rare cases of things like Justified, where you want to take a little bit of damage resisted for a secondary effect. Of course, there are also things like Static or other contact abilities where you do want to take contact damage, but those are less common. Generally, immunities are better, so if you can keep your win condition healthy throughout the battle, it's going to be much easier for you to win with it, as opposed to a Pokemon that's been worn down through repeated switch-ins to entry hazards and residual attacks. Now, the next thing you want to take advantage of in the team preview screen are going to be obstacles. Whether it's a defensive core uh, or a Pokemon that you just don't have any real super effective way to hit it, you need to take note of that immediately. That way, you can start building into your strategies ways to slowly chip away at their HP. Furthermore, if they have a defensive core that your team will really struggle to break down, it's important to identify how you're going to get past that early, otherwise your opponent will just be able to switch those Pokemon in and out, and you won't be able to do too much about it. Now this really goes into the next thing that you should take a look out for, which are going to be the likely roles for each Pokemon. Each Pokemon has four moves, they can have a variety of different EV spreads, they can have a bunch of different natures, and then you have to take into account their abilities and sometimes their gender even matters. That's too much to remember all at one time. Now if you play the game a lot, like a lot of people have, you start to remember that naturally. It's the same way that if you practice a lot, your body starts to remember your actions and then things become reactive more so than having to think about them every single time. For example, when I see a Tyranitar, I immediately know, okay, there's a lot of things a Tyranitar can do. It can be a Dragon Dance set, it can be a Salt Vest, it can hold leftovers, it can be a Mega Tyranitar now, it can be specially defensive, physically offensive, specially offensive. Tyranitar can do an enormous amount of roles on any given team. Furthermore, he can do some of those roles at the same time. You can have a specially offensive Tyranitar that sets up Stealth Rocks and has a physical move for coverage. You can have 
a Mega Tyranitar that just has a Mega kind of as a side job if the other Mega doesn't go through, and it's still a full physical attacker with Dragon Dance. There are so many things that many Pokemon can fill different roles. But, if you look at Tyranitar's place within a team of six, you might notice there's already a Dragon Dance Pokemon on that team, such as Gyarados. Or, there's Gyarados and Tyranitar, maybe they're both competing for a Mega Slot that can both run bulky rolls, so you have to take those types of things into account. Sometimes you're not going to get any information, because maybe they choose six Pokemon that can all be very versatile. If that's the case, you just need to be aware of what your own Pokemon can do. Can your Pokemon handle a physical sweeper? Do you have priority on your team? Is this Pokemon likely to run these items, such as Choice Scarf or Choice Band, or just have a Life Orb? Those are the types of things that really come with experience, and if you look at the team preview, you can start to kind of sift some of that out in your mind. Now again, you only have two minutes for the team preview, which is why it's really good to write down your opponent's team, but you can get this information relatively quickly. Now, speaking of items, that's actually an important thing to take note of as well. Held items. There are a lot of held items in the game. Held items were first introduced in second gen, and they end up nothing but add items to the game since. It's not only important to know what held items do, but it's good to know what Pokemon are generally seen holding certain held items. For example, since we're, Tyranitar is one of my favorite Pokemon, we'll stick with him. Choice Scarf Tyranitar was very popular back in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, when we didn't have Team Preview. Leftovers has always been a go-to item for Tyranitar, but now he can also hold uh, Mega Stone to evolve into Mega Tyranitar, and Assault Vest to boost his already really high special defense in Sandstorm. Now, this is not to dissuade the other uncommon held items on Tyranitar, such as Babiri Berry uh, or Chopal Berry, but the point is, I've listed off over five items that that one Pokemon can hold, and I do know all of the items that he could possibly hold, but it's good to know what he might likely be holding. So, it's also good to keep in mind things that might carry Choice Scarf, things that have Choice Scarf and Leftovers, those two items specifically give you a lot of information during a battle. But we'll talk more about that in the next video. The last thing I want you to take in mind in the entry uh, team preview screen are going to be entry hazards. Entry hazards are very, very important just because of the way they can sway the entire game. Pokemon such as Talonflame, Charizard, Volcarona, all would be incredibly difficult to deal with, if not banned outright by the communities we often are a part of, without Stealth Rock. Now, it's important not only to note the Pokemon that can put up entry hazards, Stealth Rock, Spikes, Toxic Spikes, Sticky Web, it's also important to note the Pokemon that can get rid of them through Rapid Spin and Defog. Magic Bounce gets a special mention here because a lot of players just like to have that as insurance. Bring that in and now you just set up your own entry hazards on your own side of the field. Kind of annoying. Rapid Spin is a move that has a little bit selective of a dispersion between Pokemon that can use it, but with Defog's change in mechanics here in 6th gen, a lot of players are going back and giving Defog to old flying types, and that move is very versatile because it cannot be blocked, whereas Rapid Spin can be blocked by ghost types. It's good to know which Pokemon can set up entry hazards because if you are able to predict those, you can often get a free turn. A lot of players like to lead with the Pokemon that can put up entry hazards, and you will often see entry hazards on rock and ground type Pokemon, generally. Now, the final thing that I'm going to say is important to talk about in the team preview is Pokemon that can utilize switching moves. Switching moves are going to be Baton Pass, U-Turn, Volt Switch, and Parting Shot. Now, moves such as Baton Pass and Parting Shot have such low distribution that it's a little bit easier to determine which Pokemon have those moves. Now, moves such as U-Turn and Volt Switch, those are harder to predict because they have such a wide distribution amongst all Pokemon. It's important to know which Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field might be using these moves because these moves can largely sway the way a battle goes with just one turn when you get switching initiative on your opponent. That's why 
just generally understanding which Pokemon might have these moves can help you out a lot with predicting what your opponent might switch into. So if you can identify those things on the team preview screen, that can put you at a really big advantage. Because now, if you're expecting your opponent to use Volt Switch, maybe you don't want to switch out, or maybe that's a good time to switch into your ground type. Whereas U-Turn, a great way to punish that, is a Pokemon that has Rocky Helmet or Rough Skin or Iron Barbs. Switching that in causes them to take damage just for switching out. Baton Pass and Parting Shot, both are very unique moves, but they still have the capability to give you some switching initiative. So guys, that's going to be it for this first video here. I hope you learned a little bit of something just in the team preview screen. These are just some things to keep in mind. Feel free to leave a like. If you think I left anything out on this first video, feel free to leave it in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you in the second video. Have a great day, guys.